going for a walk in the Capilano Canyon. Um, Spirit Runners hasn't been up for a while, but it's going to be starting back up soon. Water is strong. Spirit Runners walking group, me and Randy, uh, just coming here today to appreciate the clean air inside the Capilano Forest. And uh, we're going to go down and feel the energy of the rapids. Hopefully there will be a few more of this, these type of vlogs or videos um, instead of just running because the channel will be more interesting I think uh, with more diverse activities and uh, so I'll see you by, down by the river in just a minute. Do you think there's salmon around here? Tell. Normally we're able to go to the rapids just around that area and do what's called a dip. Dip is just where you're in the cold water and you can see them in some of the other videos we've made. Okay, so we're here at Capilano Canyon. So Dave, what, what do you feel is the benefit of uh, coming out to the canyon and even on a rainy day like this? Uh, so me and Randy, my brother, have been coming here for 12 years now. And it seems everything that in society that wants to keep you from taking the time to actually come down to a place like this uh, does just that. It keeps you from coming. But once you actually put it together to just come here and experience nature in this way, the sound of the water, uh, the feeling of the air, the smell, the, the brightness of the green, everything works together. Uh, to take any negative buildup of energy. Anyway, that was the our vlog for today. Uh, we're going to be heading back now. Basically, 
funded, we did fund the entire thing from the registering of people. Uh, we had four teams in the first marathon, as well as as well as having uh, full marathon runners. Mm. Um, we placed second mm. and fifth, and then from that, uh, and we had we had people involved in those marathons on our team that had never run not only in a marathon but they had never run in any race and had never actually done any organized sport in their life so we provided people that had never been physically active in their life or been a part of organized sports to actually participate in organized sports on a level on a national level and then from that it, it just took off to where we started going to the states went to blaine washington to do a, a marathon went uh went uh, one one year i did the victoria marathon on one sunday three hours 14 minutes one minute away from boston qualifier and then all of us flew out to, to detroit and we, and we did the detroit marathon <coughs> What, people, what's that? What type of advice would you give to um, people that are just starting back, <coughs> just beginning um, running? Don't strive for anything other than showing up. Yeah. yeah. Just, just find because consistency is the toughest thing. You might have, you might get also energized one week and go out and. Do do uh, let's say a whole bunch of sprints, right? Or a marathon. You might do a marathon, but then you show up. You don't show up the next week, and then maybe three weeks goes by, and then you get energized again. You come out. Well, it doesn't count. If you were to show up and run for five minutes once a week for a month, you would have beaten the person that ran, ran two marathons in that month. What, what's your background in sports? Sports, I... Uh, in athletics. Yeah, so I've been involved in athletics since I was... Uh, as before I could remember, you know. I uh, played hockey from the time I was seven, boxed from the time I was nine. As a hockey player, I played junior all over Canada and the USA. I played a uh, very boxer. I boxed at the World Championships, won the North American Native Boxing Championship, boxed professionally and retired undefeated, coached, coached at all levels of boxing with the uh, exception of Olympics. Um, ran Spirit Runners. Started a started a coaching program for youth, which has produced over five youth coaches that actually currently coach and make money coaching, as well as uh, that's my experience. My experience is both having been someone that's been helped by the sport and traveled and participate in competition, to providing that experience to both people that want the experience and people that never thought that they it's something that they're capable of. So I think the greatest thing of sports or spirit runners or anything that we've done is that we're providing people that believe they don't classify themselves as athlete, they classify themselves as something other than athlete. An athlete is something that exists on TV. And so for us, we're providing the highest level of training to people that outside of organized sports would never experience what high level training is and now some people may hear this and think well what about uh, the running room or, or some group like that they do all sorts of uh, state-of-the-art training and I've looked at their programs and, and what their programs are is a marketing pitch for getting people involved to well, suggest the right type of runner. You know, maybe they provide some uh, some game plans that have been used by other athletes, high-level athletes. But the thing about it is, is the people.
people that sign up for those groups, well, they're not high-level athletes, right? They want the, and so you have to treat them differently. It's about showing up participation and consistency of working towards a goal. It's not that uh, we're going to take a janitor that's never... Uh, never ran in a marathon and he's going to win that marathon. We're going to get him to finish that marathon and do something that he or she never thought possible. And then we're going to get those people, that person to start spreading the word to other people about what it, what what the experience meant to them and how they think that can relate to, to, to the other people in their lives. Well, um, so that's your athletic background. What are you doing now? You're going to school? I'm going to UBC to become a teacher. I have one more year in the NITEP program and then I'll have my teaching degree. And, uh, yeah, and doing carving, you know, I've done some carving programs with, uh, through UBC, but on my own, they're my own carving programs, one at John Oliver Secondary through the Take a Hike program, and uh, one that I did with the Cedar Aboriginal Youth Camp, which will be finishing on May 5th, 2017, at the UBC Longhouse, we'll uh, it, it was a five month project with these kids where actually I started the medicine wheel three years ago at a mass symposium, made a, made a prototype of the prototype and then on my own I, start, I made the prototype out of old growth yellow cedar and um, worked on it and then it sat in the box for basically three years and then when I had to do a five a non consecutive day observational practicum I ended up talking to Joel Lehman at UBC and he asked me, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to do the medicine wheel puzzle and I want to finish it with these kids. With, uh, you know, one, we, we only meet once, we met once a month for five months. And actually that got cut by two months. So we met with, it's been going since April. And the, kids have seen how each stage of sanding has gone and now on May 5th we'll throw the oil on it and the youth will be recognized in front of a crowd for their contributions to uh, to not just participating but um, finding balance within objects that they connect to the surrounding environment um, and connecting that environment and the balance of that of, of, of uh, not just the environment but of those pieces that represent the environment to their own personal life. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing right now. I have one more exam coming up. That's uh, Monday. That's it. Also, please let us know if there's anything that you'd like us to put in the vlogs. Um, if there's any kind of running or physical activity that you think uh, you'd like us to try out on a weekend uh, and we'll do it and we'll post it.